Welcome. I'm Claire Schaefer. I write sewing books and collect vintage fashions. Today, I'm going to take you on a behind-the-scenes look to discover a few haute couture secrets on this incredible Chanel brocade jacket. The dress is on a separate video. Here you can see this stunning ensemble from 1963. The fabric is a lightweight metallic brocade. The lining is silk gauze. The jacket is in good condition with only a few signs of wear. The jacket is very modern and a popular design you could wear today. The label has been removed from the jacket. This small label is on the dress. Even though the label has a defective end, the style and workmanship are similar to other Chanel designs. The jacket has two-piece sleeves, a panel front, a narrow side panel with a vent on each side, and metallic braid at all edges. It fastens at center front with two buttons and fabric buttonholes. The buttons have long shanks, which provide more movement when the jacket is worn. When the jacket is buttoned on the dress form, the buttonholes slip to the ends of the shanks near the buttons, and the right front sags more than the left front. The panel front, or princess seaming, is used on many Chanel jackets. The seam begins near the neck point. In ready-to-wear and home sewing, the seam generally begins in the center of the shoulder. The jacket does not have shoulder pads, and the sleeve cap is flat. The jacket was quilted on the side, front, and back sections. The quilted rows are on the lengthwise grain and spaced one and a half inches apart. Unlike many jackets, the quilting is very inconspicuous. The quilting thread on the brocade is a fine cotton. On the lining, it is silk. The brocade is very light and soft. The trim provides weight as well as a decorative element. First, a sequin trim was sewn to the edges. Then the gilt braid was sewn over it. Both trims were sewn by hand. The jacket has gilt buttons with a star motif and fabric buttonholes. In home sewing, fabric buttonholes are called bound buttonholes. I use bound and fabric when describing the buttonholes. The buttonholes on this jacket are unique. They were first made with brocade welts. Then, before the ends were finished, the gilt braid was hand sewn over the welts. Lastly, the ends of the braid were tucked in and the buttonhole ends stitched. Only one and a half inches wide, the underarm panel on the jacket is not quilted. At the top of the vent, the gilt trim was turned under to cover the cut in of the sequin trim. The jacket back is quilted on grain and has a single seam at the center. The back has no shaping. The two-piece sleeve has a narrow undersleeve, only one and a half inches wide and no traditional vent. The sleeve is quilted on grain. The braid and sequin trims were applied to the sleeve to simulate a vent. The gilt braid was applied over the welts on the buttonholes like those on the jacket front. The buttons were sewn to the lining. The construction of Chanel's quilted jackets is unique. The front sections and back sections were assembled and quilted separately. Then the brocade sections on the jacket front and back were joined at the side back and shoulder seams. Lastly, the lining was finished with hand sewn lap seams at the shoulders and side back seams. The jacket front includes the front, side front, and side sections. The front section has a lightweight interfacing to support the braid trim and the weight of the buttons and buttonholes. Only the side front was quilted on the jacket front section. 
There is a small dart at the armhole on the lining. On the jacket, the brocade was eased at the armhole, and there is no dart. The jacket back is quilted on grain like the side front. The quilting stops about two inches from all edges except the neckline. At the neckline, the quilting stops about one inch away. Unlike most Chanel jackets, the jacket has no gilt chain at the hem, and there is no evidence that a chain was removed. The trim provides enough weight for the jacket to hang properly. On the seam joining the side front and side panel, the seams on both the brocade and lining were machine stitched and pressed open above the vent. On the side back seam, the brocade seam was pressed open. Then the lining was hand sewn over it with a lapped seam. Look closely and you can see that the lining seam allowance was turned under and its folded edge was fell stitched over the brocade seam. The threads at the ends of the quilted rows were knotted but not hidden between the layers. On the sleeves, the buttonholes were placed on the horizontal grain. The backs of the bound buttonholes show the brocade welts. There are two dart tucks at the elbow. The lining sleeves were sewn into the armholes by hand. This is traditional in all couture tailoring. On the jacket front, the welts on the buttonholes were made from the brocade fabric. The buttonholes on the lining look like traditional bound buttonholes, but they are much easier to make. Before the lining was closed, silk gauze welts were hand sewn to the backs of the brocade welts. Then the jacket lining was finished in the usual manner. On this detail, you can see the brocade welt under the silk gauze welt at the top. The gauze is very fragile and there is a mend at the end of the buttonhole. The mend would not have been as noticeable before the thread darkened with age. This faux bound buttonhole is used on many Chanel jackets, so the welts will be the same fabric as the lining or facing. Here you can compare the buttonhole with the silk gauze welts on the jacket front lining with the brocade welts on the sleeve lining. The faux bound buttonholes are rarely used on the sleeves. Here is one last look at the stunning jacket. I'm Claire Schaefer. Thank you for joining me today. If you would like a notice for future videos, please press subscribe.